Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Welcome to Song for George by Eric Johnson. Now, this is a challenging tune. It's one that I've been learning myself for my own musical development, but I know a lot of people were keen on checking it out as well. So I'm going to do my best to explain it, but it is a tricky one. I know in advance some of these sections are going to be pretty difficult for me to slow down and explain the fingerings, but I'll, you know, I'll do the best that I can. Hopefully, it'll be enough for you to get it. I'm assuming most of you guys have been enjoying Eric Johnson's mini lessons over on YouTube. I sure have. In line with that, if you really enjoy this lesson, it would be super cool if you could consider making a donation to your local food bank. There are a lot of people in need at the moment, so that would be a really super cool thing to do. The song is in double drop D tuning, which means the two outside strings, the two E strings, are tuned down one tone to the note D. So you end up with the tuning D, A, D, G, B, D. Gives you that lovely for a D chord. A lot of, a lot of nice bottom end, a lot of sparkle in there. It's a really fantastic tuning. I'm going to break the song down into five sections, A, B, C, D, and E. Most of the sections are only two bars long, so I'm going to play them for you at normal speed and then break it down as best I can, explain the fingerings. I've done quite a lot of research into this. I'm fairly sure that I'm using the same fingerings for the fretting hand as Eric Johnson is, but I'm not sure about the picking hand. So some of that I think I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing, but a lot of it's not stuff I've thought about. So a little bit it'll be like what feels natural for you as well. I think the movement of the thumb maybe might be important, but we'll cover that as we get into each section. So let's start off with section A. Okay, that is section A. Okay, it's just two bars long. Let me play it for you slowly first of all. So, so we start with the thumb playing the thicker string, then the thumb is going to play the fourth string while the third finger plays the eighth fret on the second string and slides it up a tone. Then third finger lays down to play the thinner string, thumb plays the thicker string again, first finger comes over to the seventh fret on the third string harmonic, and then the open D string. So just that much. Worth practicing that, just on its own, that little section. Now we get to the next section. Also, not easy, we've got the Thicker string being played with the thumb again. At the same time, we've got the third finger, third fret. So third fret curl on the thinner string. And then we're going to play the open D string and the open thinner string together. Then we play the outside two strings again. Now we've got this. We're playing the second fret on the third string flick off to playing thumb, playing the second fret, uh, picking the second fingers, second fret, fourth string, first finger, first fret on the second string. That'll be played by the middle finger. And then we're back to this little D dyad, uh, open fourth string and uh, second fret on the third string. That would be the beat one. It's the very first bar. Well, not the very first bar, there's a little intro before, but. Then we play thicker string, thinner string. So thicker string. Thinner string, then third fret, thicker string, little curl, a curl, quarter tone bend, whatever you want to call it. Then open A string, 
open D string, that's open, sorry, I should say fifth string, fourth string, fifth string, uh, third fret on the fifth string, back to the D string, back to the thicker string, harmonics, this is the middle two strings at the seventh fret, just using my third finger, using my first and second fingers to pluck the strings. got this little third fret on the fifth string to the open D string. Okay, this is the little pickup. Learning section by section has a lot of benefits, particularly in this song, a lot of the parts kind of lead from one to the other. So if you get the techniques and the skills down for one section, it'll help you learn the next one. So I'd strongly recommend spending a little bit of time just on this A section, first of all, not working it up to full speed, but being able to play it consistently. And while I'm on that, a really good idea would be to write your own tab down of what I'm showing you here. I am working on getting tabs for the website, so that might be available now. It's worth popping over the website and have a look and you'll see my kind of authentic tab, my transcription of it over there, because it's very useful to have that in front of you when you're learning stuff. You want to be practicing it real dead slow and making sure you get it right, even if it means pausing. Try not to like dead stop, but allow things to slow down if you're not sure and then try and keep the flow. What you don't want to do is introduce mistakes. If you get a mistake like I did when I learned this song more than 20 years ago, the first time I learned it, I learned some mistakes in it and I learned wrong fingering. So it's taken a lot of work to undo that. So you're much better off really focusing your attention on getting things right at the beginning when you first learn it, especially with a little section like this. So just taking it real slow. this section over and over. Now I'm going to give you a close-up look now at what's going on with the finger picking hand. I'm not exactly sure that's the way the, the exact fingering that EJ is using. It's up to you a little bit to find what's comfortable for you, but the key thing to pay attention to is the movement of the thumb. I think that's pretty important. Which fingers you use for the other notes, less important, but trying to keep that thumb consistently moving between the thicker string and the fourth string, I think is one of the key things to making this tune work good. Here I'm using thumb, thumb and middle together. First thumb, ring, 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 first, flick, thumb and middle, thumb and first. Now here, thumb, one, two, one, two, one, thumb, together. That's all thumb, first finger on that last. So it's time for the B section. Now this section has one of the parts that's most often played wrong. I think there must have been a transcription at some point that put it in a particular fingering in this part of the guitar neck. It's how I learned it, but then I watched some live videos of EJ playing it to check out the fingerings and stuff. Noticed that he always plays it a different way. I started learning it his way, feels a lot better. So 
it's negligible how benefit it is, how much benefit there is to learning it his way if you've learned the old way. I'm not sure you'd change it. I did because I'm a pedant and I really wanted to get it right and I love the song so much that I wanted to really try and nail down his version as best as I could and I suspected I might do a lesson on it. So I'm going to show you his way, but if you've learned a different fingering, be gentle with yourself. If you want to keep doing that one, no one's going to get hurt, really. So the B section is this. Okay, it's nice and slow. Lovely. So we start, this is an F chord, an F add nine. Okay, so the chord is staying the same all the time. It's just about the fingering pattern. So playing the thicker string, then the fourth string with the thumb, uh, middle finger is playing the second string, then open G, bass string, thinner string. And then back to the fourth string. So here, first finger, third fret on the thinner string, little curl, then off, then it's fifth fret on the thicker string, open, uh, third string, and then back to the thicker string. And then we just end on this note C. Now this is that line. It does feel a little bit awkward here. It's easy to, which is that kind of the wrong way. Again, you see EJ playing it this way. So it's second finger, fifth fret on the third string, first finger, third fret on the second string, third finger, and it's important that it's the third finger on the sixth fret of the second string, a little finger going down the seventh fret of the thinner string. Now we've got first finger, third fret, uh, thinner string to the open string. Actually, I'm using my third finger there. I do apologize. No. <laughs> I don't know. I remember which way I'm doing it now. Yeah, third finger. Then so third open, second finger, uh, second fret, third string, flick off, play it, second fret again, third fret on the fourth string with a curl to the open string. So let me play that B section for you a couple of times now, just nice and slow so you can see how it all fits together. time. Sometimes I'm flicking off that last note, seems as well, in preparation for going back to the A section. Let's have a look at the finger picking hand. So thumb at the first part, you've got that nice consistent movement there, but here, so I'm using thumb and second finger here, I don't think it'll really matter which finger you use there, but then thumb, first thumb for that little section, thumb, seems I'm using my thumb here on the third string, fingers for the rest. just for that last note for the flick off. 
Um. One more time, nice and slow. So after the beat, it goes back to A again, and then we meet, for the first time, the C section, which has some super cool, tasty, but also very tricky bits to it. That's the C section. Uh, another one of those ones where there's a few things that are different uh, when you start checking out exactly how EJ is doing it. So. Section C starting with the 2nd finger 12th fret on the thinner string that's happening a 16th note before the beat then we play the 3rd finger 13th fret on the 2nd string with a little curl at the same time as playing the bass note the 5th string and then it drops down to the 1st finger in the 10th fret of the 2nd string Now we've got 2nd finger 7th fret of the 2nd uh, string little uh, third finger goes down on the seventh fret of the third string we play it individually individually together slide and then we play it down at the fifth fret it's definitely worth getting that bit it's not the trickiest bit but it does feel a little bit awkward <laughs> this is just nuts, this section. So now we have the ninth fret on the fourth string with the second finger. Open, thinner string. Now it's a very quick uh, slide up and back with the second finger on the ninth fret on the third string. Then open G string. Then first finger on the seventh fret of the fourth string. Sorry, it's, there's an E string in there as well, then G, then that. Very weird. So, ninth fret, open thinnest, 9, 10 slide, open thinnest, open G string, that's the third string, then finishing on the A. So now we've got little finger 10th fret on the thinner string, third finger 10th fret on the third string, open E, and then the A again. How does he think of this stuff? Then it's third finger covering the seventh fret thinnest two strings. And then I think it flicks off to the first finger and then moves down. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, you could flick it off to the second finger, but that feels horrible. One more time, nice and slow. Yeah, important to get that second finger there on that... Uh, a note toward the end, here, there, that's got to be second finger to enable the next play. If you do first finger you're going to be in all sorts of tangles, so make sure you get that there, second finger. Finger picking hand close up for the C section. I'm really not sure if this is exactly the way EJ would play it or not. It doesn't really matter what fingers you use for the riff, obviously thumb is going to have to play the bass line. It's definitely easier with first and second fingers. So 
So I'm, it seems like I'm using thumb on the fourth string for all of those sections. Thumb, first finger, third finger, first finger, thumb, third finger, first finger, third finger, thumb. First and second fingers together. So there is kind of a pattern there, the way I'm doing. So after the C section, it goes back to the A section twice, then a B section, then an A section, and then back to a C section again. So by just with A, B, and C, you're more than half of the way through the song. It's a good idea to practice each one of those sections, but a mistake that I made when I was learning it is I spent a lot too long on those sections before I moved on. And then the rest of it, particularly the D and the E sections, which are in some ways the hardest parts, were always a little bit weaker for me. And that was something I really had to work on when I was relearning it now, was spending a lot more time on the D and E, particularly the E section, which I'd learned really wrongly. And it took a lot of effort to be able to even slightly get it kind of right. I'm a bit worried about that section for the lesson, but we'll worry about that when we get there. Um, so something to practice for sure is doing the A, A, B, A, C, A, A, B, A, C. It's very common form. Give it a bit of practice. Make sure that you're clear with what all of the parts are, but don't go like polishing it up before you move on to section D, which we'll look at now. Probably the most difficult thing about the D section is the syncopation between the thumb playing the bass notes and the fingers playing the melody. It is a little bit awkward, but the thing that will make it a lot easier is making sure that you have the melody of it in your musical mind, in your musical imagination, where you can hear it in your head. You want to make sure that you can keep the beat. So you can have Just having that, being able to verbalize it a little bit and knowing where the beat is will be a huge help because the thumb's still alternating and the fingerings get a little bit more complicated. There's quite a lot going on in this little four bar section. So expect it to take a little bit of work. The key thing here again is working real slowly and making sure you know where the notes are relative to the beat. It's the key thing. Let's get to the close up. So the first bass note is the 16th note before the bar. This first finger barring the 7th fret thinnest two strings is what is on the beat. And then it's little finger going down the 10th fret on the thinnest two strings and doing a flick off. Then it's bass note on the 4th string, thinnest two strings, little finger still down, then another flick off. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, it's a real tricky little passage that one. It really is. Cuz we've got that bass there with the flick off as well. Bass before. Bass pick. Definitely worth practicing. Just trying to get into the flow with that one little section and trying to feel it. <laughs> It's 
not easy, but it's a good thing to practice in a little cycle again. Uh, after it's gone through one time, then we go into the single line part. <laughs> We start off with some of that bass uh, confusion as well. The bass comes again on the 16th before. So we're going 5th uh, fret, 3rd fret open. Then the bass note then is coming with the middle note. Then we're moving up, same note. But we move to the 2nd string because we've got a, some more notes further up. I don't exactly understand why he chose to make that position jump there. I saw EJ do it in a live thing, tried it, felt right for some reason, so I kept it there. But, you know, I learned it the first time round all down there and kind of worked fine. So the next little section A little bit weird again because of the open strings. It mixes things up. Sixth fret on the second string, fifth fret on the seventh fret on the thinner string, sixth fret, open thinner string, uh, fifth fret on the third string. Would it, it would be in the because of the tuning, it makes it super nice. And then we've got again, that bass note is pushed again, the 16th note higher, and that uh, 16th note earlier. Uh, and then we're repeating that same section. So let me try those two together now, nice and slow. I know it's a little bit clumsy. I wish I could do the counting of the rhythms thing like I often do in songs, but in this song, I'm just like, I can't, <laughs> I can't verbalize the count as well as concentrate on getting the notes right. It just doesn't seem to work. I have tried. Um, we're into the B section. One more time, I'll see if I can slow it down even more. Three, four. I'm not sure whether he hits that bass note when he moves up or not. I found myself doing it when I was doing it slowly, but I don't think I do it at full speed. Uh... No, I don't. I'm definitely not hitting that bass note when it moves further up the neck. It seems like I can do it slowly. I don't think it's what's on the record. It's not on my transcription I've got in front of me. Might be. It feels nice slowly to put it in there, but at, at tempo it feels even more awkward. So. You'll just have to bear with me a bit on that section as well. So after the D, it goes directly into a B section. So after... We get that low note, which was the same note, the last 16th note before the bar that was repeating in that section. Is joining us now as the leading into the B section. Back to A, then C. Now this is the section I struggle the most with because I learned it wrong 20 years ago. I don't know how I got it so wrong. I had it completely in my mind it was different. And I don't know how it got that way, but it was. So relearning this has been a real battle for me and a, a testament to why it's important to learn things right the first time around if you can. Uh, it is the kind of the outro section. We've got this E section, which is just four bars long. Then it's back to B and A and we're out. So it's the last little bit, the last hurdle. And I do think it's a particularly cool little bit as well. So 
I always put a slide in. But I don't think Eric always does that. There's a couple of videos where there's a bit of action there, but otherwise it just feels a bit weird after... Two, three, four... So when you get it in the pocket and it's feeling good it's like oh man what a lovely little piece this is to play so let's see if i can't break it down so a little slide in section e so so cool so it's a bit of a D chord here. If you're learning this song, I'm assuming you know a D chord, so just lift your second finger off. We play the thicker string, then we play the fourth string and the thinner string together. Then thumb will play third fret on the fifth string. First finger will play the open D, then we play the thicker string, then the thinner string. So, third fret on the fourth string, second finger. First finger, second fret on the third string, flick off. Then we play the thicker string. Then third fret on the fourth string, curl. Open, third fret on the fifth string, open D. So. It's pretty consistent. time now we've got the D chord so we open thicker string the chord so we're just using thumb and first and second fingers to pluck strings five four and three third fret on the fifth string Open D string, open thicker string. Now it's second finger, third fret on the fourth string. First finger's got to stretch all of the way back to the first fret in the second string. And we're going to play the third string and the second string together. Then third finger goes down on the third fret of the second string. Second finger moves over to the note C, which is the third fret of the fifth string. And then we're back to our D. Back to our D chord then. Open, uh, open fifth string. Second finger hammering on the third fret of the fifth string. Back to the open D again. Let me see if I can get through that section. Again, bass, chord, do the bass. Let's join it up now, those two bars together. Okay, let's do a finger picking close up of that section.
So rather a lot going on in this song. I'll say it again. The key to learning this song to be able to play it properly is learning the sections, making sure that you get the sections right first, building on them. Learn section A, learn section B, then practice A, A, B, A. Learn section C, then practice A, A, B, A, C. Get comfortable with that and practice the whole section twice. You're now more than halfway through the song. Check out section D with the really highly syncopated bit. Spend a little bit of time working on that. Then practice all of the way through to that point, not working it up to performance standard, but just so you can play it through in time without any mistakes. Then you're working on B, A, C, and then you've got that last E section and then a B and an A to finish. The E section, like I said, I found it difficult because I'd learned it wrong, but I think I suspect for most people it won't be the hardest bit. I think D is the hardest section for me. I guess we're all different, so you might find a, another section of the song more difficult. Uh, we didn't talk about the intro uh, of the song. Uh, not really a big deal. You just want to drag down with your first finger. I hold my first finger with my thumb, kind of holding it like I'm holding a pick. Uh, I'm playing a D chord, but with my second finger removed. And then I remove my first finger as well. And then hammer my first finger down while I'm doing the, the little scrape up. If I get a little bit of nail there, that kind of works good as well. Um, I've been playing with flesh instead of nails now for a couple of years. I much prefer it generally. Um, it's a little bit less maintenance involved and a little bit more child friendly. Uh, but if you want to play it with nails, you'll probably get a little bit more Eric-y, kind of crispier tone with the song. Um, I really hope you enjoy this playthrough. Like I said, if you've enjoyed this lesson, please consider making a donation to a food bank charity in your local neighborhood. It really might make a big difference to somebody else's well-being. So that sort of stuff's important while we're sitting around enjoying playing guitar here. So uh, if you enjoyed this lesson, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, slap the like. Uh, I'd love to say, tell me what other Eric Johnson songs you'd like, but I know you're all gonna say Cliffs of Dover and I can't play Cliffs of Dover. I've been trying for years but I just haven't got the picking chops to play that song. I, otherwise, I would have done a lesson like Young's ago. I can play kind of most of it, not very well, but I'll leave that song for the guys that can really nail that stuff, I think. But I might consider doing some more EJ stuff because he's such a wonderful, wonderful guitar player, definitely one of the greatest of all time. And I'm sure you'll enjoy studying this piece as well. Do remember that over on the website, I've covered a lot of the technical challenges that are presented in this song and talk a lot about practicing and how to make the most of your time and mental learning and all of that sort of stuff. So go and check that out. There'll be a link below in the description if you're over on YouTube or if you're on the website already, just uh, take a look around. There'll probably be some suggested lesson links below this video as well. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You all take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.
think I was going to get through that the first time.